hi guys in this tutorial i'll be sharing with you guys how to cut and sew a princess that illusion bustier it is very simple and this is the lace i'll be making use of okay now i have my bridal satin and i'll be making use of it as my underlay and i also have my fusible interface this is hair stay and paper stay and for this lining i'll be using it in form of my pattern paper because i ran short of pattern paper okay now the measurements you are going to be needing for this tutorial are the shoulder measurements the bust measurements the under bust measurements and the waist measurements you are also going to be needing the front length and the back length i've gone ahead to mark out the baseline and this baseline is the shoulder line now from this shoulder line i'm going to go down by 10 inches for my bust points I will probably go down to 14 inches for the under bust point, and then the front length is 17 inches. Now, after this, I'm going to draw my lines across. So you can see we have the bust points, the under bust points, and then the waist line. Okay. Now, from here, I'm going to move over to the shoulder line, divide my shoulder into two, and then mark it out. So, from the center fold of my pattern, I'm going to mark in my shoulder divided by two. And from that point, I'm going to go down by one inch for the shoulder slope. Now, from this shoulder slope line, I'm going to divide my bust circumference by six and add 1.5 inches for my chest line. Now, just to ensure that I have my shoulder divided by two, on that same chest line, I went in by eight inches and connected my armhole depth, okay? Now, after these, I'm going to move over to the center fold on the shoulder line and then take in my neck width and my neck depth. So I'm going to make use of 3.5 inches respectively. And that is what you can see me trying to mark out. After this, I'm going to use my curve ruler to connect the points together. And then next thing I'm going to do is divide my armhole depth into two. So after dividing it, I'll mark out the middle points. And from this middle point, I'm going to go in by half an inch. Okay. Now, after that, I'm going to go ahead and divide my bust circumference by four and mark it on the chest line and then connect my front arm hole. After connecting my front arm hole, I'm going to connect from the shoulder slope to the neck width. Okay. So we have our shoulder slope right there. Now, I'll move over to the bust point again, divide my bust circumference by four, mark it down, move over to the under bust point, divide my under bust circumference by four, mark it down, and then move over to the waistline, divide my waist circumference by four, and mark it down. Now, I'm going to connect all these points together. And then after this, you guys, I'm going to divide my nipple to nipple measurement by two. Now, I'm working with nipple to nipple measurements of 8 inches divided by 2 is 4. I added half an inch for allowance, making it 4.5 inches, and I marked it on the bust point line, under bust line, and the waist line. Now, after this, on the bust point line, I'm going to go down by 0 0.75, and then equally go up by 0 0.75. Now, I'll move over to the waistline, and by the side, I'm going to take in my darts. So, I'm working with that of 2 inches, but by the side, I'm going to mark 1.5 inches, and then mark half inch on the center. I'll repeat the same thing on the under bust points. 1.5 inches right at the side front, and then half an inch on the center front, and then I connected with a straight line. And after that, I'm going to connect with my curve into the 0 0.75 inches below the bust point just like this okay now after this i'll move over to the armhole and then i'm going to divide what i have right there so i'm going to measure it and whatever i have i'm going to divide it by two and then i will mark it down just like this can you see the way i took it down and then after that, I'm going to tighten the armhole by one inch. So I'm taking it half an inch from both sides. Now I'm going to connect it to the three quarter of an inch above the bust point line, just like this. 
and then after that because of this one inch that intake we are going to raise the side by one inch because if you don't do that by the time you are about to join this one is going to be longer than one i hope you guys understand i know by now you should already know why we are doing this and then after this you are going to connect our new armhole I will probably go ahead and replace this one inch that intake on the chest line and then add my sewing allowance. So for my sewing allowance, I made this of two inches. I'll go down to the underboss point, replace my dart and add my sewing allowance. Repeat the same thing on the waistline, replace my dart and add my two inches sewing allowance and then connect the points together. Now, after this, you guys, this is what we have next we are going to have to input the shoulder sewing allowance half an inch and then i'll connect it after that i'm going to on the bust point line go down by two inches okay for my bust that now this is the difference between the front and the back length two inches and i'm going to connect it to the bust point just like this and you guys we are done so what I'm going to do next is cut it out, okay? So I'm just trying to rule out a line so I'll be able to cut off this um, remaining lining that we use for the back. So guys, now you can see that I am done cutting out the excess lining. So what I'm going to do is start from the neckline to cut out the front pattern. After that, I'll move over to the shoulder and then into the armhole. Now, once I get to half of the armhole, we need to create the shape for our yoke, okay? But then we are not going to cut it out right now. You are still going to understand why I want to input the shape of the yoke. So from the bust point, I went up by 1.5 inches. And now I'm still not sure the type of um, neckline I want for this yoke. So let me just connect it to the darts just like this. And then after that, I will continue with my cutting. You have to pay good attention to how I'm cutting this out, okay? So you can see I've cut out the center fronts. And then after that, I'm now going to cut through the new armhole, you can see. So please don't mistakenly cut out on another part because you're going to just destroy everything you have cut out now guys i remember that i folded into two so i just removed one of the pattern the side front and then i'm working with just one right now okay now i'm going to continue with the cutting and you guys you can see so it is time for us to close up the bust that so i'm going to go ahead and slit it and then close it up with my pins. So guys, I actually enjoy cutting on this lining. Like if it was to be a paper, I would have been struggling with using a masking tape to tape this down. But with lining, it was actually easier. So guys, I am done with this. And you guys, this is my front pattern. This is the center front and the side front. You can see I didn't cut off the yoke okay we are still going to come to that now this is for my back i've gone ahead to mark out the shoulder line and then from the center back i came in by two inches for my zipper allowance now everything i'm going to be inputting now is going to be after the zipper allowance as you all know so i divided my shoulder into two mark it down went down by one inch and then input my neck width of 3.5 inches and then for the neck depth i made use of 1.5 inches and then i'm going to go ahead and connect it now after this i'm going to connect the shoulder slope into the neck width okay and then next i'm going to place my tape on the shoulder line go down to 10 inches for the bust points after that, I'll move over to the waistline 15 inches. Now, remember, the front length is bigger than the back length. Okay? The front length is 17 inches. 
the back length is 15 inches so i drew my lines across and now next thing i'm going to do is on the shoulder slope i'm going to divide my bust circumference by six add 1.5 inches for my chest line okay and then i'll connect my armhole depth just like this just basically what we have on the front apart from having a zipper allowance right here okay and the depth of the neckline now after that i divided the armhole depth by two mark it down and then on the chest line i divided my bust circumference by four mark it down and connected my back armhole can you see now after this i'm going to divide my bust circumference by four mark it down and divide my waist circumference by four and then mark it down next i'll move over to the bust point line divide my nipple to nipple measurement by two and mark it down on the bust point line and on the waistline and connect the points together now after that i'm going to move over to my waist for my waist that intake so I'm going to mark out on the side 0.75 and to the center 0.75. So in total, I made use of 1.5 inches for my dart intake. Then after that, I'll go down from the chest line by one inch and connect my dart. Now after this, I'm going to move over to the chest line and add up my sewing allowance two inches. And on the waistline, I'm going to replace my dart intake of 1.5 inches and add my 2 inches for sewing allowance and then connect the points together. After this, I'm going to move over to the zipper allowance. And then just to avoid any form of zip bulge, I'm going to be going in by 0.75 inches. And then I'll equally go out by 0.75 inches. And then I'm going to use my ruler to connect it back to the neckline, just like this. After this, I'm going to also determine the type of shape that I want for the yoke of the back. Remember, we are not cutting it out now, okay? So from the chest line, I'm going to go up by one inch. And then I'm going to use a slight curve to connect it to the half of the armhole. And then I'm going to equally add up my shoulder sewing allowance of half an inch. And after this, I'm going to go ahead and cut out my back pattern. So guys, as you can see, I am done cutting out my back and front pattern. And this is what I have on the table. So now it is time for us to cut this out on fabric. Remember, this is our pattern. So first of all, I'm going to have to cut out on the lace. Now, this is the center front. The center front has to be one piece. The side front has to be two pieces. And then the back has to be two pieces. Now, I also went ahead to trace out my dart on the back, okay? And here is what we have. So for the back, I cut out two pieces. For the front, this is the center front, I cut out one piece. And then for the side front, I cut out two pieces. Now that I'm done cutting out on the lace, I'm going to bring back the pattern. And then we are going to have to cut off the yoke. To cut off the yoke, I'm going to be adding up half an inch for sewing allowance, okay? So what I'm going to do is come up by half an inch just like this and then i will cut it out now after that i'll move over to the side front as well and then if we add up half an inch for sewing allowance and then after that i'll move over to the back to cut off the back yoke now to the back, I will equally add up half an inch for sewing allowance. And then after this, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Now you guys, this part that we just cut off, 
we are not going to be needing it anymore that part of the yoke it is no longer necessary okay so now with this pattern i'm going to be cutting out the lining and the underlay so i'm going to bring in my bridal satin here is my bridal satin now to the center front i'm going to cut out two pieces for this one for the underlay one for the lining and then to the side front i'm going to cut out four pieces and then to the back i'm going to cut out four pieces i hope you guys understood clearly what i've just explained so as you can see i am done cutting it out and please remember to trace out your back dart so guys you can see for the side front i cut out four pieces and then for the center front i cut out two pieces this is the center front and then this is the side front okay now guys remember when i was cutting this i told you i haven't decided on how i want this part to look so i'm going to have to trim it off because i want it to enter into the armhole okay remember it was entering into half of the armhole now i want it to enter fully into the underarm so i went ahead to trim off the excess just like this and you guys this is what i have and now here is the back now if you want yours to remain the way it was before you can leave it that way so guys as you can see here is my lining and the underlay remember i made use of bridal satin to cut both the lining and the underlay and i've gone ahead to add up the hair stay and the pepper stay into them to make it firm okay now for the underlay i made use of hair stay and for the lining i used pepper stay i've equally gone ahead to join my back darts i don't know if you can see the line of the darts but let me try as much as i can to bring it closer to the camera so you guys can see so i also went ahead to iron the darts because i cut off the excess allowance on that that part so that it could lay flat and you guys please do remember that this is for both the underlay and the lining now here is the side front i've also gone ahead to double pad the cup area and this is for both the underlay and the lining as well so you can see there are four pieces here is the center front for the underlay and the lining now this is my center front and the side front what i'm going to do is placing my lace okay so i'm going to make sure that the right side of the lace is matching up with the right side of the underlay and then the left part of the lace is matching up with the left part of the underlay and then the center of the underlay matching up with the center of the lace so you guys can see i am done arranging that next thing i'm going to do now is bring in hemming tape cut it into pieces and then place it around the curves okay and around the sides and then around the underarm of this i hope you guys are getting me and then after gumming it together with the lace and the underlay i'm going to go back to my sewing machine and join it like this okay but then as i'm sewing this before i get to the upper part i'm going to leave about one inch and then stop sewing i'm still going to explain in details why you should leave one inch right there okay so i'm going to repeat myself i have my hemming tape cut it into pieces and then place it around this center front and the side front and then gum it together leaving out half an inch which are going to use to turn out the lining now i'm going to repeat the same thing for the back here is my back i'm going to place in the lace into the underlay now i'm going to use my hemming tape to hold it around leaving half an inch right at the upper part so we could turn it out with the lining so i'm going to go do this because it is very simple so the front and also the lining so guys i am done sewing and you can see i left about one inch just like i explained now i left this one inch because i want to attain neat finishing around this part so what i'm going to do is join the underlay to the underlay and then lace to the lace i hope you guys understand now after this i'm going to go ahead and turn this out with the lining now to turn this out with my lining i'm going to ensure that i push in the lace with the illusion look in between the lining and the underlay as you can see 
and then I'm going to match it up, making sure that the right side of the lining is facing the right side of the lace. Okay. So, guys, I'm going to move over to the sewing machine and stitch around the part that I'm showing you. Now, the armhole, I'm not going to stitch that. Okay. After stitching, I'm going to top stitch and then equally turn the side seam. Okay. Now, I'll repeat the same thing for the back. I will stitch the upper part, stop stitch, and then turn the side seam. So, guys, I am done with the back, and this is what I have. Now, it is time for us to turn the side of the front because I am not yet done with it. So, I'm going to make sure that the right side are facing each other just like this. You can see the way I flipped it, and I'm going to sew the side using about a quarter of an inch. Okay and after all of that give this a good press and equally turn the neckline with my bias so guys this is what i achieved you can see how neatly finished this is looking if you find this tutorial helpful please give it a thumbs up share it so that more people can get to see this tutorial and subscribe if you haven't subscribed i'll see you guys in my next one